Good morning, church. If you see a little dog running around here, it, it's ours. Might as well have somebody to talk to. So, no, no emails, please. There she goes. Um, hey, just a reminder, there's a community drop box out here, a prayer drop box. You can drive right up to it. It's, it's a big type mailbox, and there's, um, there's cards inside, and there's pens in there if you need them. But uh, don't hesitate to drop an anonymous prayer request. There's a lot of people right now that actually want prayer and need prayer and don't have a church family or know somebody. Um, and, you know, this is a good anonymous way just to drop a prayer. And we have got this team of people that have a heart to pray for those that are hurting or that uh, are in need. So just, uh, just a reminder on that. Good morning. I hope uh, everybody is doing well wherever you're at. Get yourself comfortable, because I just have uh, a few words I want to say here, and I want to let you get on with your day. It's very nice out. Um, I got I to gotta give you a little history here, I guess, to, to start this message off. Uh, about five years ago, um, I believe that God was trying to tell me to go plant a church. And, you know, that's, that's hard. I first thought it was funny and a joke, and then it got to where it was convicting, and then I felt like I was being disobedient. And we had to go, and I'd go home and tell Kelly, and Kelly's like, eh. And Abby said, I can sing. And, and we did. And what happened was we, we had to leave our church. We had to leave our, our church family. Uh, Abby had to leave her church we're a youth group, and um, it's not that it was real far away or anything, but there was just so much to do that we found ourselves kind of distant from our regular routine. I think that's kind of what a lot of us are going through right now. Um, I had instructions on what to do, and I actually jotted down a few of them here. It was November 15th of... 2014, God was telling me that um, this was his vision, not mine, not yours, maybe I should say, and that I should go plant a church and just simply preach. Get a few people together, husbands and wives, to help you and simply lead a flock of people. So here we go. We're on a mission. We, we leave everything behind and go to a community that we're not familiar with. It was a mission. And it was, it kind of caused an uproar. We finally had to move, and the people that we used to hang out with, we, we didn't see anymore. And sometimes God does this to us. He puts us in a tough spot to get us to move. And I am so grateful that he did. I wouldn't be standing here today. You wouldn't be watching me online. And that wasn't part of the plan that I know of. But this church family that we created here was all because we had to get very uncomfortable and be away from our church family to start a new one. It truly was a mission. So fast forward to... Uh, May 2020. And what's happened here now is you guys are now on mission. You have left your church family and you are on a mission. Your entire family is on a mission trip together. Now, there's nobody here I guess I can really ask, but, you know, a lot of you have probably been on a mission trip before. And um, short-term mission, you know, I, I love this word short. This, this varies, right? It can be a week, it can be a month, it can be a couple months. Those are all short term. And what happens when you, you go on a short term mission is that you step into a different culture usually. Now this doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to Africa or something like that, but when you pack up and leave your church family, you go to a place where you have to get to know what's going on. There might be different laws. There's a culture change. There's places that you cannot meet in public. 
Uh, you have to deal with people that don't know Jesus. There's different food and different ways that you get your food. There's very few luxuries. Sometimes there's no public school. Sometimes there's disease. And sometimes you might run into a culture where people don't want you to get close and you need to stay six feet away. Does that not sound like today? These are all the things that we're going through here today, wherever you're at. That's just like being on a mission trip. Different laws, different culture. You can't meet together. You're dealing with people that don't know Jesus. You're getting your food a different way. There's few luxuries. There's no public schools. There's disease. You know, a lot of you people that have been on a mission trip, you've got to get shots before you go. There's unknown diseases there. And a lot of times, people don't want you to get close. That's exactly what we're dealing with today. It's just like going on a mission trip. So what I want to talk to you about is how... You know, Jesus actually put this into place. You know, I don't see anywhere I, I tried to find where it says, you know, see how many people you can get in a building. And I, maybe somebody's got a paraphrase that says that, but it says don't get out of the habit of, of um, not meeting together. We're not out of the habit of not meeting. Uh, no, I'm not saying that right. We're not out of the habit of getting together. We are simply on mission. And that pulls you away from your church family. And how we act when we're out is really the basis of this message. But let's talk about what Jesus did. First of all, we all know the, the, um, uh, the Great Commission, right? This is taking the good news, taking the gospel uh, to all the nations and to teach them to make disciples. Okay, so how are we going to do this? We have to go out. We have to leave our church family and we go. And Jesus actually tells them, you need to go. How about, how about when he says um, to send out the 72? Some of your, some of your uh, versions will say 70. But let's take a look at uh, Luke 10, 1 and 2. I'm going to use the um, New Living Translation here. The, now, the Lord now chose 72 other disciples and sent, sent them ahead in pairs. Sent them out in twos to all the towns and places he planned to visit. That's us today. These were the instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. That's what we're doing right now. That's the church right now. He has sent us out. And I think everybody get, needs to get this mindset that we're on a mission. Things are a little bit different now. Okay, I got to set my church family aside for a while, and I've got to go. And things are going to be a little bit different, but I have instructions. You're part of the church, and that never changes. And we're going to go two by two or family by family out to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. I see this whole pandemic thing as one big mission trip for all of us. Now, maybe we didn't travel very far, but everything has changed. You know, sometimes you get a little homesick when you're on a mission trip. And, you know, I'm, I can say I'm kind of there right now. I miss everybody, but I'm on a mission, and so are you. You can still communicate when you're on a mission trip. That doesn't change, typically. And you have people that sponsor you while you're on a mission trip. I'm going to get a little weepy here for a minute. You guys have been so awesome. Sending in things. Church is in a good spot. This, this is just great. People are sponsoring us to go out into the mission field and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what this is all about right now. Can you get that mindset that somebody is sponsoring the Simply Free Church family to leave this building and go out into the communities around and spread the good news of Jesus Christ before he comes? That's a mission. 
It's one big mission trip. And I gotta tell you some good stuff that comes out of these mission trips. For instance, when he sends out the 72. They did good things. It started the church. I'll tell you about my best friend. Okay, so we had to leave our church family, and he was part of that. And I told him that, um, you know, God was leading me to, to plant a church. And he said, oh, that, that was great and everything, but I'm not, I'm not really on board with it. He liked his church family. We all like our church family, right? And what happened was he accepted an invitation to go on a mission trip. And while on the mission trip, the Lord told him, go help Glenn. Those are the kind of good things that come out of mission trips. God speaks to you. You get more time to be with him. And of course, I think you all know the rest of the story. He was only one of few. I have another, another friend and his wife that were dealing with some, some struggles at their own church and some bad stuff was happening and he was standing up for the congregation and some of them, they started to divide and he didn't know what he was going to do and he was led to come and help us too. Sometimes God has to make us uncomfortable to get a good plan put into place. And if we all just keep getting together all the time and every Sunday morning, and you, you know, I preach this all the time. We're all good on Sunday mornings for an hour, right? What has he got to do to you to make you take the good news out someplace else? That's a mission. That's taking a mission trip. And you're doing it with your family right now. You're all together. The culture's different. Laws are different. You're going to be gone for a little while. You're going to get a little homesick, but you can still communicate with people. The church has not changed at all. Yes, we're not supposed to get out of the habit of meeting together. We're not out of the habit of meeting together. You're on a mission. It just kind of got forced on us instead of receiving an invitation and accepting it. Sometimes that's what God's got to do. He's got to get us in a tough spot to make us move. And what we should be doing is taking the good news to those around us wherever we're at. If we weren't doing a good enough job at it when we're all getting together on Sunday mornings, then you break up Sunday mornings. How are you guys doing? Is this a mission trip for you? You're being sponsored by the church. The, the parishioners of Simply Free Church are actually being sponsored to be on mission in your community, in your place of business. How about your house? Can we start there? That ought to be the place to start. Now you've got all this time, right? We all sit around and I see things on social media about everybody's tired of being together and... You've got time now. What, what I want to talk to you about is how we act when we're on a mission. And uh, this, this is really uh, on the forefront of the news and stuff lately, how, how people are acting. When the Lord sends you out on a mission trip, I want you to think about how you act. You should be led by the Spirit. There should be evidence of the Spirit be producing fruit, and it all starts with love. You become accustomed to the culture, and then in that culture, you spread the good news, their way, the way that they do it. And what's happening right now across America and everything is that Christians are demanding their rights. And I'm all for that. I get that. But if you're on a mission trip, can you, can you just see this now? I can just see somebody going to, uh, I better not say a town, going out and walking into a town. Now he's there to spread the good news. He's on a mission from God and saying, I don't have to do that. You can't make me do that. I got rights. I'm a Christian and we don't, we don't have to follow your rules. We got our own rules. Has anybody ever seen this happen on a mission trip before? 
Actually, here's something you, sh you should all think about. I'm not putting anybody down. I think God uses us all in, in the place that he wants us. Paul is writing a letter to Philemon. Uh, Onesimus has bailed on Philemon. I'm just trying to talk here because this is our culture. So bail wouldn't be in your scripture. Onesimus bails on Philemon. And actually, Paul's writing him a letter saying he wants him to accept Onesimus back. He wants him to come back. He's helped Paul. And he says, therefore, though I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting, yet for love's sake, I rather appeal to you. This is Christianity right here. Paul could have commanded, in fact, some of your paraphrases and translations will say, I could have commanded you. But instead, for the sake of love, I appeal to you. That's a Christian. Yeah, we can command a lot of things. We can demand, we can command, we can stand up for our rights. And then you're going to go around and give testimony to the good news of Jesus Christ and how loving and kind and gentle he is. We're on a mission trip, you guys, and you need to act like you're on a mission trip. You show love to people. You adhere to the culture. We never have to cross the line. Don't get me wrong. We don't cross the line. Don't, don't, um, don't interpret my kindness for weakness. But you've got to fit in to the culture when you're on a mission trip. And you try to fit in to win them over. We get, kind of got on a rant there for a minute, didn't I? If you've never been on a mission trip, you're on one right now. This is a mission trip. We've all been sent out from the church, and we can't get together for a while. Act like you're on a mission trip. Instead of demanding or commanding all these things you have, can have. You know, I've said this so many times, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I, I just feel like there's so many things that we can do, but should we do them? And it says in Scripture that uh, everything is possible, but is it profitable? That's kind of what that means. You know, when you're on a mission trip, you want to show people love. You want to be kind to them and gentle to them. Sure, you don't let them push you around, but you try to fit into their culture, what they're dealing with, to win them over. You become like them to win them over. Not start making a bunch of demands. Not say, I command you. You walk into some town and say, I'm, I'm, on a, I'm a missionary, and I'm on a mission from God, and I command you to let me do this. And I command you to let me do that. I just don't see that in Scripture. It doesn't line up with love and gentleness and kindness. In fact, it makes me wonder whether the Spirit's actually there. You know, I'm a big guy on evidence of the Spirit. Jesus was on a mission. And sometimes when we're on a mission trip, um, it's not fun. It's not comfortable. You say, yeah, I didn't sign up for this. Well, you're there now. Even Jesus was on a mission from the Father. And he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. We do this, don't we? I don't like it. I'm on a mission trip. I don't like it. I want to go home. I don't want to finish the mission. What if Jesus had not finished the mission? He says right here, if there's another way, take this cup from me. Let's, let's do this some other way. Father, isn't there a different way to do this? I don't want to die. But not my will, but yours be done. Isn't that what we should be doing? Yeah, I don't like this mission. I want to go back to the way it was. I miss my church family. I want to go back to my church family. I'm homesick. 
I don't like your laws. I don't like your culture. I don't like the way that we're eating. I don't like the things that we can't do. And I want to go home. I want this over with. And Jesus could have just come down from the cross and said, I'm out. Is that where you're at right now? You don't want to finish the mission? It's almost over. It's going to be over pretty soon. Just a little while longer. You've all had kids that say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? How many of you had parents that said, don't make me pull this car over? You know, isn't this kind of where we're at with, with this whole thing we're going through right now? Okay, so let's take this mindset that we're on a mission trip. Hey, this is enough. This is long enough. I want to go home. I'm done. What if God said, don't make me pull this car over? You are not done yet. we got a lot of work to do. And you're on a mission, and you're not going home yet. Jesus could have came down off the cross, but he stayed on mission. Three and a half year mission. How about Isaiah? Uh, I just love this guy. Well, the worship team get ready. I'm going to take a little time so you don't have to hurry. Let's take a look at Isaiah 6 8. A lot of you probably know this one. God's speaking to Isaiah. He says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to the people? Who will go for us? Isaiah says, Here I am. Send me. No hesitation. He didn't stop and pray about it. He didn't get a bunch of Christians together, run it through the baloney meter. You guys all know about my baloney meter, right? Didn't do a lot of this. Didn't say, well, I, I got to think about this. I'm not sure this is for me. He, without hesitation, said, send me. Are we like that? I hope so. God has sent out the parishioners of Simply Free Church on a mission. You're sponsored by the church. And did you actually say, here I am, send me? Or are we whining about not being able to do the things that we did? Send me. Oh, but wait a minute. I'm not going to be able to get together with my, my friends on Sunday mornings. And, you know, they got some funny laws that I'm going to have to obey. I don't know if I can do that. Isaiah didn't do any of these things. The 72 that he sent out didn't do that. Jesus comes to earth on a mission. He didn't do that. But yet, we're all homesick, and we're tired of not getting together, and we're using, uh, you know, we should never get out of the habit of meeting together. We need to start doing this, and regardless of what the law is, we can command and we can demand that we have our rights and this and that, and I don't see the love in any of that. I don't see you being full on for the mission. I got a picture back there I want you to put up. Now, I'm not bragging on my kid, but have you ever seen the back of Abby's heels? <laughs> you know, don't you? Send me. You want to turn around, Sean? No. Send me. Can you at home right now say thank you, Lord, for sending me on this mission trip? I accept your mission. Send me. Use me. Do what you want with me for the good of you and your kingdom. I'll do it. Instead of demanding, commanding, grumbling, arguing, and being selfish about not getting together. That, that's really selfishness. That would be leaving a mission that God has sent you on because you want to see your friends. It'll be over soon. The mission trip will be over and everybody will be back. And you know what's going to happen? I, I hope we're all going to have these stories. I was telling you about my friend the went on the mission trip he wasn't full on with planting a church. All of a sudden, he was on fire. I need to help you. What do you need? I'll do it. I'll, I'll, what, do you, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? 
I want you guys to be that when we come back. I want testimonies. I want stories. I want change in your life. What have you learned? Every time you go on a mission trip, you learn something. God reveals something, and He had to get you there to reveal that to you. And right now, you've got a lot of time to let Him reveal to you the goodness of Jesus Christ and what He did for you. That's where you need to start when you go on a mission. What is this good news I'm taking? Do I know the good news? Do I know Jesus? Do I have a relationship with Jesus? Because he's the one that's going to guide you on the mission. He's the tour guide on your mission trip. And we're all on one right now together. Deuteronomy 31.8. I want you to think about this while you're on mission. Let's put that up so everybody can see what it is. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. That's a mission. That's a mission trip guide right there. He's with you and he'll lead you. Don't get discouraged. Don't start demanding things and pretty soon you're getting all ugly in the face and you're doing things you shouldn't do when you're actually on a mission and can be doing it right where you're at, right in your own home, your own community, and the culture might be different. You might have to stay six feet away from people. This is the, this is the culture, the mission trip that you're on. You don't have all these luxuries. You're gonna have to get food differently. Yep, you're gonna miss your church family, but you are on a mission. I tell you what you need to do right now is just take some time to look up to the heavens and thank God for Jesus Christ. He is worthy of all of our worship. He is worthy of all of our praise. He is the healer, the maker, and the calmer. You are on a mission. Look to the guide while you're on the mission. I hope that during that response song, you actually got to meet your, your tour guide, your mission guide. When you go on a mission, usually there's a guide or a group that instructs you on what to do and how to do it. And what I'd like to do right now as pastor of Simply Free Church is invite you to come on a mission trip with me. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll instruct you as we go along. But I, I got to tell you, uh, if you accept this invitation, things aren't going to kind of be all the luxury that you're used to. We're going to go into a culture that's a little bit different, and um, we're going to have to stay apart from these people that we're going to meet, and uh, your groceries might not all be, you know, cupboards might all not be full the way that you're used to, and uh, we're going to probably have to stay in very small groups, and we're not going to actually be able to go out and, and meet people and all get together like we do on church. This is the mission trip that uh, I'm inviting you to go on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the good news of Jesus Christ out to the people, and we're actually going to be representatives of Christ. And we're going to show them the love and the kindness and the gentleness that comes from following our Lord and Savior, our ultimate guide. Now, right now, I hope that in your homes, you've all jumped up and said, send me, I'll go, I want to go. I'm inviting you to do that this day. And until this is over, and until we can say, okay, we're coming home. Everybody's homesick. Let's all get back together. we got a lot of stories to share. You know, there's going to be testimony out of this. I want to go. Send me. Who wants to go with me? You're on a mission trip, and you need to do it right now. It's not about how many people we can get together in a building. It'll be over soon. We're going to be able to break bread together again. We're going to reminisce. And I hope each and every one of you have got some sort of testimony that comes out of this mission trip. You are now missionaries. And I hope you've accepted my invitation. There's one thing you need to do. There's a prerequisite to going on the trip, and that is to get to know your tour guide. And uh, all you got to do is, is you know, I'll, I'll introduce him to you. 
is uh, Jesus from Nazareth, and all you got to do is tell him that, uh, you know, you haven't done everything right, but you'd, you'd like to do something different now, and uh, I've accepted Glenn's invitation to go on this mission trip with you. And what I'll do is I, I promise to always put you first. I believe that what you're doing is, is amazing. And from this day on, I'm committed to helping you. That's a very simple kind of salvation message to the ultimate leader of the mission that we're on. Just accept him and go on this trip with us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the mission. We accept. I got a whole bunch of people that accept this, this mission trip that your son's going to lead us. Father, use each and every one of us just how you want to. And even though it might not be as comfortable as we're used to and things might be a little bit different, we're just going to lean on our guide to show us how to act, to remind us to be loving and gentle and kind and peaceful and patient, very, very patient with our guide. Thank you so much, God, for this opportunity. Send me. It's in Jesus' name I thank you. Amen. Have a good week.